Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to start the match with the equipment that player has selected in the menu. So to start, let's go to the session manager. First, let's create a long variable and name it account ID. And we're going to set the value for the account ID in the menu manager inside the on authenticate event. So when the authentication is successful, we're going to set the account ID inside the session manager. So inside the character script, we are going to change the dictionary that we are passing as items. So first I'm going to create a struct of data and it's going to be system serializable and I'm going to name it base data. It has a string for ID and an integer for count. And for the data struct that we have, instead of this dictionary, I'm going to use a list of base data items. And inside the get data, instead of this dictionary, let's say a new list of base data. Also here for each item, I'm going to create a new base data. And here I am going to add that item. So to smoke out all the references to that dictionary, let's go to our private initialize function, which is here. And for the input, I am going to pass list of base data as items. So this is going to be ID and this is going to be count. Now, if we take a look, we're going to get a bunch of errors, which we can fix by passing a list of base data instead of a dictionary. So here is also another error that we need to define a list of base data instead of a dictionary. So we don't have any more errors inside the character script. Let's go to the session manager script. And here, when we call the spawn character server RPC, we're going to do that inside on client connected here when we are passing a account ID. So instead of that, we're going to pass the account ID we created up here. So now it is going to pass the correct account ID. And now inside the spawn character server RPC, we are going to define a variable of type data runtime game. It exists within the real time networking. So this runtime game equals to real time networking dot netcode get game data. So it is running on a server and our server has been started using real time networking. In that case, when we call this function, it is going to return a game data for us. And by the way, if you want to put extra data inside this variable here in the terminal script of our real time server, we have a function called override game initial data. So this is the data that is being passed to this function. So you could add more variables or change variables if you want. By default, it contains the selected characters. So that data is going to be received here. Now we have a list of all the characters that should be connected to this game. So I'm going to find the one with this account ID. To do that, I'm going to define a runtime player. By default, it is null. And then I am going to loop through runtime game players. And when I find a player with this account ID, that is our current player that is trying to spawn in the game. First, actually, let's check to see if that player is not null. And if that player has characters, in that case, I am going to do all of the code here. So let's cut everything from here and paste it inside this if condition. Here we go. Now, when we try to get the prefab of the character, instead of just passing a string, I'm going to pass player characters zero. That is the first character it has. And I use tag to identify the prefabs. And when I instantiate that character here, instead of creating uh, items like this, instead of a dictionary, I am going to use a list of character that base data. So let's clear that. And I'm going to use the items that character has. So in order to do that, I am going to loop through the player characters zero equipment, and I'm going to get the prefab using the prefab manager of that equipment using the tag. And if I have that prefab, I'm going to create a new character 
base data, assign the ID. And if it is a weapon, I'm going to choose the clip size for data.count. If it is ammo, I'm just going to use 100 ammo for default. Otherwise, I'm going to use one as count and I'm going to add it to the items. So the rest is OK. We don't need to change anything else. Now let's go to the Unity editor and here we need to make a few changes on our new character. So if I open the character here in the previous video, I forgot to assign the proper axis for aim and up of body and right hand. So let's go ahead and do that for the chest. I'm going to select that. And as you can see, the forward axis is this green one, which is Y. So let's go ahead and set that. And by the way, for your character, these values should be different. And if I select the chest again, the up axis, it's going to be the reverse of the X, which is this red one. So it's going to be negative X. So let's go ahead and do that here. Up axis is going to be minus X. And for the right hand, if I select that, the forward is going to be negative X. So here. It is going to be minus X and for the up axis, it's going to be negative Z. So here it is minus Z. That is OK. Also, let's go ahead and select our camera route and I am going to bring it here. And also for the Z, I'm going to set that to zero. Now everything should be fine. Let's go back. Another thing that we need to do here in the first character, as you can see in the player input, we have the input actions, but we also need to assign that for our new character. So if I go and take a look at my player input here, I need to assign the input actions as well. So everything should be fine. Let's go ahead and build for our dedicated server first. I'm going to place it inside the netcode server folder. And after that, I'm going to switch to Windows and build for the client. I'm going to place it inside the build folder. So here it is. Let's start the real time server first. And after that, I'm going to start the editor. So that's it. And also let's start a client. Now we have two clients. And if I go to a character and select a different character for this client, I'm going to select that. And for the other client, we have this character selected. So let's go back and start matchmaking using that character. And for this character, I'm going to also start matchmaking. So here is, as you can see, we have two different characters in our game and we can move around and let's go to the other character. Here we go. So everything works fine. And if I go to my other character, well, everything looks good. It needs a little bit adjustment on the offsets on the body rig. So you can do that. You can play around with the numbers and get a result that you're comfortable with. So, so far everything works. So I'm going to finish this video here. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.